Well, it took more than a decade, but an Indiana couple finally gets to confront the billionaires they blame for their son's overdose and death. Fox 59 Chief Investigator Steve Brown tells us about that showdown in a most unusual court hearing. What a mess. It was rainy and cold, but that didn't matter to Bill and Christy Nelson. Hi, Brian. It was Brian's birthday. Happy birthday, son. Brian Fence. Christy's son, Bill's stepson. I sure miss you. Gone 13 years now from an opiate overdose. I never in my wildest dreams thought he would die. 9 It was Christy who discovered Brian unresponsive. Yes, hurry. The horror of it captured in this 911 call. I need an ambulance. My son's not breathing. Hurry. Is he blue? He's white. How old is he? Oh, God, he's dead. Ma'am, I need you to calm down. How old is he? Ah! Ma'am? He's too Found in Brian's room after his death. 80 milligram pills of OxyContin made by the Connecticut-based drug company Purdue Pharma. No opioid drug maker has been pursued in the courts more than Purdue Pharma, blamed as a major contributor to the nation's opioid crisis and the more than half million overdose deaths in the United States. While not admitting wrongdoing, Purdue Pharma paid billions in settlements, pushing the company into bankruptcy court in Manhattan, where a very unusual deal was struck. Via Zoom, 26 people who had lost a loved one to an opiate overdose got to speak to the Sacklers, who owned and ran Purdue Pharma and made billions from the sale of OxyContin. The Nelsons were the only ones from Indiana selected for this hearing, and were given very short notice to prepare. You only got a day? Only a day. In court? To get ready. One day. And earlier this month, at the remote hearing, the Nelsons were disappointed. Richard was not on camera. He was on telephone only. We never saw him. Richard is Dr. Richard Sackler, former chairman and president of Purdue Pharma, who according to court records wrote in emails that if people die because they abuse OxyContin, then good riddance, and referred to addicts as scum of the earth. Of the three Sacklers in attendance, only Richard Sackler was allowed to just listen in. That bugs you. Uh, that, that really bugs me. Well, bugs not the word. It pisses me off. This is what the Nelsons' court appearance looked like. Now, cameras aren't allowed in federal court. So the Nelsons, in a Facebook video, recreated that hearing appearance by reading the exact same testimony and beginning the exact same way with that haunting 911 call. Oh, God, he's dead. Ma'am, I need you to calm down. How old is he? Oh, Ma'am? He's too Ma'am. You wanted to make sure the Sacklers heard that. Uh, absolutely. And I hope they hear it in their dreams at night. Because I do. But you know what, Richard? Bill kept his focus on Richard Sackler, saying that when the hearing was over... Richard will hang up his phone and go do whatever arrogant billionaire cowards do on their birthday. Shortly after the hearing, the bankruptcy was closed, leaving the Nelsons, again, disappointed. Justice was not served. No. In any way, shape, or form. I sure miss you. And the Nelsons? They're left with a gaping hole in their lives. I wish you were here. Looking ahead to years of annual birthday visits for Brian. Happy birthday, son. Happy birthday. Mommy loved you too much. In Indianapolis, Steve Brown. Happy birthday. Fox 59 investigates.